Matthew, ending the Old Testament and going into the Gospels. Notice I did not say the New Testament. Introduction to the book of Matthew, we need to go to Hebrews 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And not 15. 16. Hebrews 9, 16. For where a testament is, Old, Old and New Testament, there must also be necessity be the death of a testator. Okay? In verse 18, the first testament was dedicated without blood. Death. The New Test, I mean, the Old Testament began with the death of the animal that God shed to clothe Adam and Eve. You open the, your, your Bibles from Malachi to Matthew and your Bible, any Bible, any version, says New Testament. But that's not inspired by God because that's not the truth. Because if Hebrews 9.16 says we have to have the death, well, the New Testament begins Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. That's the death of Jesus. That you find in Mark 15, 37, Luke 23, 46, and John 19, 30. From this point, in the four Gospels, recorded in all four Gospels, the New Testament does not begin unto the death of Jesus Christ. So what you have is the Gospels are in the Old Testament. The Gospel is that Jesus Christ died. One of three parts. So there is no New Testament unto the death of Jesus on Calvary's cross. So when you go into the Gospels and you go into you with your church doctrine, you are wrong. Because the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is Matthew 27, 50, Mark 15, 32, Luke 23, 46, and John 19, 30. Then begins the gospel. And, three day, and they entombed him. When they took him off the cross, in three days and three nights, he arose from the grave. That's the gospel. You're not going to find that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before the chapters and verses I gave you. You say, well, Matthew, they talked about the gospel. That's not the gospel of the church salvation. Now, Matthew, well, actually, between Malachi and Matthew, there are 400 silent years. Matthew was written 64 to 66 A.D. Matthew is, a, is the gospel of the King, Jesus. Jesus is never referenced as a king of the church. Mark referenced Jesus as the servant. Luke referenced Jesus as the man. And John, for the Jehovah Witnesses, referenced Jesus as God. Matthew, as we go into Matthew, we're looking at Jewish gospel. 
And when the church primary runs to Matthew, the Great Commission of Matthew, uh, uh, was it 27? Okay, but Matthew is a Jewish gospel. Uh, you better well go to Mark chapter 16. Jesus said unto go into all the world and preach the gospel, which your modern Bibles remove most of chapter 16. Quinky dinky. And make sure we don't the devil does not want you to get the truth. He will have you remove the truth totally. So Matthew, as we go into Matthew, it is Jewish favorite. Now you can find some verses. Doctrinally, it's to Israel. Historically, it's the life of Jesus. And you can spiritualize some verses to fit the to, 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 to preach to a Christian. And you might find some things in there that would, would, would agree with the Apostle Paul. I'm not Paul only ism. I want to be doing Matthew that would fit but when we come to places in Matthew he that endures to the end shall be saved that ain't me and it's one thing I have been in several churches I have been saved since 1987 and I see these churches open the, open the Bibles of Matthew open the Matthew open the gospel of Matthew Matthew chapter 10 and Matthew we're going to look at the virgin and we're going to look at the oil of the virgin and we're going to look at Matthew we're going to look at Matthew wait and then they'll turn around and say well you know replacement theology is wrong we're not Israel we're not under the law what are you doing running to Matthew And I'm going to point that out to you. I'm going to show you in our study. This is not church. This may be, you can maybe put an application to the church. Okay, this could be the church. But primarily we're doing with the nation of Israel. You see, you know, you know what the American wants to do? He wants to take the Bible and he wants to, to the American, to the American, God bless America. That ain't the case. The form of government for God is a king. God as the king. Okay, we'll have men as the king, not president. Nowhere can you find election and voting. You don't like that? And you want to be American and all that? Well, when you get to New Jerusalem, you find out there's no red, white, and blue. There's no guns. There's no president. There's a king on the throne. It's the Bible. It is gold and silver and precious stone. And the nation above all nations is Israel. You're going to have a problem. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. The book of the genea, the generations of Jesus Christ. All right, so this is Jesus Christ. The son of David, that's a king. That's King David. That's the one that God says of your seed, there will be always someone on that throne, of your throne, of the nation of Israel, not the Oval Office. Donald Trump, the Republicans are not your saviors. If they are your saviors and you put your faith and trust in Donald Trump and the Republicans, you're going to hell. And you'll find Republicans there. You say Donald Trump. I don't know if he's saved. God knows he's saved. Donald Trump knows he's saved. And the devil knows he's saved. I don't know. But if you're going to put your faith and trust in that, instead of the king... You say, well, Jesus is not the king of the church, but he's king. The Savior is king. The Savior is God. The Savior comes from David. You better not have a Savior that comes from the line of presidency. You better not have a Savior that comes from the line of, of uh, King Charles III. You better not have a, a Savior that comes from the czars of Russia. You better not have a savior that comes from the lines of Omar's. 
You better not have a, a line of, 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 of a God that comes from emperors. You better have a line for a salvation by God of God that is a king of from David. And, then, and we, we narrow it down more. The son of Abraham, Jewish. You better not have the God of Ishmael. You get the God of Ishmael, Arabians, Muslims, Shihas, and that's your religion, that's your faith, that's your trust, you're going to die and go to hell. Your God is not the God of the founding fathers of America. Your God ought to be the God of Abraham. And we'll read more. Abraham begat Isaac, oh, not Ishmael, not Thomas Jefferson, not George Washington, not Samuel Adams. The God that Jehovah Witnesses deny. The man Christ Jesus, who is 100% God, 100% man, his generation is the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God narrows it down. Not Esau. Don't, don't come up and cry. We're Esau. We're the Edomites. All right. Actually, you're a cursed race of people. Because you hate your brother. And God told uh, Abraham and Isaac told Jacob, Cursed be them that curse you and blessing them that blesses you. The God of the Bible... Is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Thomas Jefferson, not John Quincy Adams, not George Washington, the father of fathers. None of the names of the names on the Constitution, at the bottom of the Constitution, is the family line of Jesus Christ. Jacob begat Judas, that, that is the Greek. It, well, it, oh, Stolly said that's the Greek for Judah. It's just a change of spelling in the different languages. So we narrate even more. Jacob had, Israel had 12 sons and a daughter. And there are perverted religions out there. Oh, we're, 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 we're colored people, we're of, we're of Israel. We're colored people, we're of Israel. And we're, we're, we're an Israel class of people. And we come from Issachar, we come from Dan. We come. If you don't come from Judah, if you come from the, if the 11 sons of, of Jacob or the daughter Dinah, and, you, and your Savior does not come from Judah, the lion, the tribe of Judah, you're going to die and go to hell. Look at we narrow it down. Of all the leaders of all the world, if your Savior ain't from David, you're going to go to hell. Of all the founding fathers of all the world, if he's not of Abraham and Sarah, you're going to die and go to hell. If it's not of Jacob, the son, I mean, excuse me, if it's not Isaac, the son of Sarah and Abraham, you're going to die and go to hell. If it's not of Jacob, of Isaac and Rebekah, you're going to go to hell. If it's not the God of the family of Judah and Leah and Jacob, not the beloved wife, Rachel, the hated wife. And we're, we're going to start running into women in the land of genealogy. It's not Rachel. It's not the handmaids. It's the wife that the Bible says that Rachel was loved and Leah was hated. That's, that's the fourth son of the woman that was hated. How's that for a genealogy? This is, this is an outcast human genealogy of God the Son. 
and the Jews. Begat Judas and his brethren, that would be the eleven sons. And Judas begat Perez and Zayar of Tamar. Now that's Tamar. This is the first woman mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus, and she is a Gentile Canaanite. Genesis, we're not going to go there, but Genesis 38, 6. So the KKK, we hate all Jews, we hate all colored people. What are you going to do? And you say, we're Christians, we're going to burn the cross. That's quite weird. We hate the Jews and we hate Africans. We hate the colored man, the KKK said. And when you open up to the King Jesus and his genealogy, you got Abraham the Jew and you got the first woman, a Gentile colored woman because the Canaanites were of hand. Somehow, some way, they became colored. And there's many thoughts and ideas on how they became colored. We don't know. Whether that mark of Cain was the colored man, if whatever it be. You cannot say you're a Christian and turn around and say, I hate the Jews and I hate the colored people. Because later on we're going to learn that there's a disciple of Jesus who was a Canaanite. What do you do with that? As a Christian, you, 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 don't, you don't join. You don't support the KKK. And if you're in it, get out. And if you're an organization that, you know, uh, Jesus and the disciples were colored and, and no regard to the Jewish people, you need to get out of that too. Genesis, I mean Genesis. Matthew chapter 1 teaches us that Jesus has a Jewish lineage. And in that lineage, there's a colored woman. What do you feel about mixed marriages? What are you going to do with that one? By the way, you want to take the fact is Tamar. She begets Perez. Perez is a son of Tamar and Judah, her, her, her father-in-law. And her father-in-law, Judah... His wife has died, and he, he, something about he's going to the sheep masters and the sh the shred the sheep and all that. And he meets this woman. He thinks she's a Harley. He's like, "Hey, baby, can I pay for you?" And she's like, "Yeah, sure, baby. How much? What will you give me? I'll give you a goat, a little kid, and he's like, but you got that goat right now. You ain't got that goat right now.' He said, like, I'll take that walking stick. I'll take those bracelets. I'll take that thing, man.'" You put a little deposit down, and he went on to her, not knowing it was his, his, his daughter-in-law. He went to send that kid. They couldn't find her. She went home. Then he finds out she's pregnant. He says, burn her. And she's all right, but this is fine. But the staff, the signet, and these bracelets, who are they? He goes, oh, those are mine. What happened to the capital punishment all of a sudden? Oh, not, not, now it's you. How's that in the genealogy? Perez, which means breach. Perez's mother and father was father-in-law and the daughter-in-law who played a harlot. Which in the law later on said, you're not to do that. They're not under the law yet. Perez means breach. What's that? Perez had a brother. Inside the womb of, 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 of uh, uh, yeah, Thamar, one child sticks his hand out of the womb. That, that must have been weird. That was a, they said, oh, this is the first one. They put a string around his finger. His, his hand goes back in. And then the next one, the next son in that womb comes out. They go, what, what on earth happened here? This is a breach. That's fair as. Then the one with the, with the red scarlet around his finger comes out. We got a breach in the line of Jesus Christ. 
You wouldn't think God manifested. You wouldn't think the godly lion and would be such a ruckus, and we're only three verses. We're not done yet. You would think that the line of Jesus, the, 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 the kingly line of Israel, man, they're, they're magnificent. They're royalty. They got blue blood. and they're, they're, There's no such thing. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Begat Ezron. And these names you'll find, in, they're, they're mis, not, not misspelled, but you know, because the different languages. Ezron begat Amram. Amram begat Imadab, Imadab begat Nasan, Nasan begat Solomon, and Solomon begat Boaz, which is Boaz, of Rechab. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. All right, now you see Boaz begat Rechab. Rechab, you know what that is? You didn't think about this too. You really look at it. I don't know if Ruth tells you who. That's Rehab of Joshua chapter, chapter 3. That's the woman that's in the, in the house on the wall of Jericho, the harlot. Did you know that? Did you know that there's a harlot in the line of Jesus Christ? She too has a red rope or thread in her genealogy, in her life. And she helps the spies of, of Israel. And they say, listen, tie this red thread around your window. And you know, your mother, your father, anybody that's in this room when we come, the Lord will protect them. Anybody not under your roof, not anybody in your room, they step out for something and they die, that's in their own hand. But if they're in your room... If something happens to it, it be upon us, this would be the protection. And Joshua sent them in to go get Rahab and take her out of there. As they destroyed the city of Jericho, she became part of the Jews. She became part of the family of Jesus Christ. And we're going to pick up those Jews at the second advent like Joshua picked up Rahab and her family. They're off on the side. Go get them. Bring them with us. As we as we conquered the Gentiles. And you heard me say that over and over. You listen to these lessons. So that means Rahab would be a colored woman of the Gentiles in the land of Canaan. Rescued by Joshua. Joshua and Jesus both mean Jehovah saves. Ruth. There's Ruth. You know who she was? She was a Moabitess. Married to a Jew. Whose husband died in the land of Moab. And God said the Moabite shall not come into the assembly of the house of the Lord a certain amount of generations. You say, well, how did God, well, how did, how did Ruth get in there the Moabite this? Because the Bible says the Moabite, not the Moabite this. And Ruth comes in there and she and she's like, she, she's going to take care of her mother-in-law. She's going out in the field of Boaz. She's working hard. She don't sit at the water cooler. She doesn't collect welfare. She works. She's made known. And she's faithful. To a God that she doesn't even know. And a God that is absent from her and her family. And Boaz marries her. The Book of Ruth. And they have a son named Obed. Obed beget Jesse. Jesse beget David the king. I'm not talking about David the, the, the prince. I'm not talking about David the president. I'm not talking about David the, the, the duke. I'm not talking about David the czar. I'm not talking about David the great. I'm talking about David the king. The king of what? The king of Jerusalem. The king of what? The king of the Jews. If you're Lord God and Savior, the human part of Jesus, the kingly right of Jesus, who is God. If David, the son of Jesse, run it backwards, we're not going to run it backwards. 
You can't run the gene genealogy of David through to Jesus. And you got trouble. You got a problem. Okay. The king of the uh, David the king. Let's look at it. the da David the king begat Solomon. So we're going to look at the kingly line in here in a moment. Now this line will be the adopted father of Jesus. Adopted father of Jesus. Adopted father of Jesus. Joseph. We'll learn about him in a moment. Now we have the mother line of Jesus. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Now we're not going to read all hers. I want to show you something. As soon as I find a place. Luke 3.32. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read backwards. I'm going to read Luke 3.32 and 3.31. So, Nasan of the son which was of Solomon, the son of which is Boaz, this is hard, the son who, which was of Obed, which is the son of Jesse, which is the son of David, the son knows no king. Luke is the human side of Jesus. There's no king. It's looking at Jesus the man. The human, the flesh, and blood, and he has to sleep, he has to eat, he has to cry. Which is the son, Nathan, 331, not Solomon. Mary's line, and you chase Mary all the way back to Adam. Mary's line at David runs not the not the king Solomon but Nathan and goes off. So when you say the queen of heaven, wrong the kingship ends with not even mention David the king like Matthew does. It says David then the son of Nathan. She ain't the queen of heaven. She's not the royal line. So you've got Jesus the king of the Jews by the adopted father Joseph. Okay, how's this one? Now you got David the son of David, Nathan the son of David Without the king, the human line of Jesus, Jesus is God, Jesus is man. Now back to Matthew. Yeah, I went all the way back to Genesis. Matthew. Verse 6. Jesse begat David the king. We are looking at the king. Not the human side. So, Matthew, the tax collector, will write on Jesus, the king of the Jews. When we, Lord willing, we get to the Gospel of Luke, we're going to look at the humanity of Jesus. David, the king, begat Solomon. That's the kingly line we'll look at. And of her that had been the wife of Uriah's. Notice how it said, have been the wife of Uriah's. She was not the wife of Urias when Solomon was begat. Urias had been murdered by David by the time Solomon. The baby that was of Bathsheba, and we're talking about Bathsheba, while married to Uriah, Urias, Uriah, that baby's dead. And then when David takes her to be wife, Uriah, Uriah is, is dead, Solomon. Now, that's murder. We've got Canaanites, we've got covered women, Canaanites. We've got a harlot 
in the line of Jesus. We're, we're six verses. Six is the number of man. Now we got adultery. Because David committed adultery. And everybody's, oh, you know, David committed adultery. David murdered David. And the woman, not mentioned by name, is mentioned in the genealogy. That's the one he committed adultery with. So you'll get some preachers, adultery, sin, adultery, sin, adultery, sin. Yet the adulterer and the adulteress is in verse 6. You don't mention that when he said when they brought the woman caught in adultery and they say, you know, the adulterer and the adulteress shall be killed. You forget that the adulterer and the adulteress is mentioned in Matthew 1 6. How's that? The law said that David and Bathsheba should have been killed. God's mercy. God's grace. What some Baptist preachers don't have. I'm not telling you to go out there and murder anybody. I ain't telling you to go out there and commit adultery. But if it happened before you were saved, you had no... Alright, so... Move on. Uh, Solomon. This is the man that had a thousand wives, and his, all his wives took him to other gods. And he built temples and shrines and buildings and churches and all kinds of things to other gods and worshipped them. And the Bible gives the list, and we're not going to go look at it. We've already read it. So we got a man that not only worships, you know, religions. And the law specifically says a king is not to have multiple wives. We get Rehoboam. That's Rehoboam, Rehoboam, Rehoboam. This man, in his ignorance and his foolishness, divides the entire nation of Israel into two, Israel and Judah, which has not gotten back in Matthew and has not gotten back today. Now, Jesus is God perfect, but his family ain't. There's only one perfect kingdom of, of Jesus and the king that will be of Jesus, and that's Jesus himself. And Rehoboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa. Asa, the one, I believe he was diseased in the feet and he got angry with God and turned to the physicians. Okay, and Asa begat Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat begat Jerome, and Jerome begat Uzziah. That's Uzziah. Now, we got a problem. That Jerome is Jehoram. This. And the, the change in the spelling is the language. Verse 8. You guys beget Jonathan. And Jonathan beget Ahaz. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. After Jehoiakim, there is Azariah, Joash, Amaziah, and Jehoiakim. Matthew excludes these three kings. We three kings of forgetting to put them in the Bible. Look so far that we don't know what we're talking about. Glory and honor and gold and silver. How we prevent the word of God. There are three kings missing. And these kings are wicked. Not like the other ones were. It's all but when you look at Solomon, you say, well, that's wicked. When you look at David, murder and adultery. Yeah, but what was their heart condition? With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Though David and Solomon sin like a Christian sin, man, if our heart hates it, and even, you know, at times that favorite sin of you, you do it because you really want to do it, but then... You, you get upset. 
We're looking at three kings and their lives. You go back and look. And, and their family, uh, I mean, crossbreed is just wild and wicked. And, and God, the Holy Spirit, said, Matthew, yes, Lord, don't write their names down. And heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall pass not pass away. And forever and eternity, the record of Jesus is going to leave out three kings. I don't think you're going to find those three kings in heaven. So well, what's that give to us? If your name's not being recorded, you're not going to be. Now, don't get me wrong, because there are places in the Bible, there are Christians in the New Testament, they are not named. Yet they'll be in heaven. There are people in the Old Testament, their name is not given, but they'll be in heaven. But I'm looking at these three right now, what we're looking at chapter 1. They're not there. David won't see these grandchildren. They won't see Grandpa David. Verse 10. And Achaz begat Manasseh, that's the longest reigning wickedest king. Manasseh begat Amon, Amon begat Josiah. Jehoiakim, or Jehoiakim, has been omitted. In verse 11, Jehoiakim begat Jehoiakim and his brethren. About the time they were carried away to Babylon. Well, there was even the Jeconiah, God tells the prophets, drop off the J-E. I don't even, because J-E is Jehovah. I don't even want to be associated with that name. That's bad when, when, when you name somebody with, with the Lord's name and God says, no, you just erase that part. You know what? I'm going to say it. I don't care. It amazes me with Christians today, and, and, and you see their children, and they're Christians, and, <clears throat> and they, they were born, their children were born when they were Christians, and not one of them has a Bible name. What's up with that? Not one. Styling, now my parents weren't saved, Styley comes from a name. Actually, I was named from my uncle. But my grandpa was named Styley. In the Hayward line, there was a child that was named for a father or a grandfather and goes back. My brother was named for my father. I was named for my uncle who died in a motor vehicle accident. So I'm not named like my family. But I'm named for my uncle. But there are names that are for, you know, you name the child of a grandfather or father that's in the family. Okay, I okay, I understand that. But if you got two or three or four or five children and not one of them has a biblical name and you're saved, what's wrong with you? I know Christians, they got a child. Their children are named Willow. I, I don't want to, but... I got a strange feeling in the back of my head where that willow came from. But I could be wrong. You can't pick out one name in the Bible. You cannot exalt the Bible with a name in your child. And I'm going to get in trouble by this. Name your child by a character in the Bible. When my wife Lisa and I found out we were going to have a baby girl. We sat down. We looked at the Bible name. And I said, I told my wife, Lisa, I said, I said, I'm going to name our daughter Sarah Lee. And she said, no, you're not. I, I told her, I said, serious. Every time we go to the frozen food section, I can say, look, Sarah Lee. She's definitely not going to name them that. We decided to name our daughter Rachel Anna. And my wife said, you can name her Rachel Ann, but you ain't going to name her Anna. Anna, the woman in, in Luke. Rachel, the, the wife of Jacob. 
Ariel, the city of David, and when you when we get into it, but her name has a specific meaning to Jesus. Rachel means ewe lamb. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Anna means grace. That's the church age. Ario is the Lion of God. That's Jesus Christ coming back in the second advent. My son is Henry Frank Hayward. Henry named for my grandpa. Frank with a C. Frank Charles, my dad. I followed the family. If, I, if we were going to have a third child, well, we actually would have been a fourth child. My wife had a miscarriage. And I said, well, we're going to name our, if we have another son, we're going to name him Hebrew James. I said, no, you're not. My wife had to watch me in that. She even had the nurse when I filled out the forms with my daughter. And that nurse looked over my shoulder. I was about to write Aunt Rachel in. She said, you better not. I'm like, wow. My wife don't trust me that much. How come, how come this Christian parent, how come you can't name at least one child from a Bible name? I threw my five cents in there. Verse 12. All right, so verse 11. Now we are at the time of Jeremiah, Lamentations. We are at the Babylonian captivity, verse 11. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias beget Samothiel. Samothiel beget Zobavale. So, well, you see, see the Babel? See the Babel in there? That's Babylon. That's the place of the tower. And Zobabel beget Abundum. Abundum. And Abundum beget Elkim. And Elkim beget Azor. Azor beget Sadak, and Sadak beget Achim, and Achim beget Elam. And I'm saying them wrong. Elam beget Eliezer. Now oh, there's a name from the Old Testament, Eliezer. That was the faithful servant of Abraham. And Eliezer beget Nathan, Nathan beget Jacob. Oh, we know Jacob. That's the son of Isaac. And Jacob beget the son, um, excuse, Jacob beget Joseph. Notice how we went all the way back to the 12 sons. And it's funny how the name of the adopted father of Jesus was not Judah. Wouldn't you think it would say Jacob beget Judas? No. Jacob beget Joseph. That was the beloved child of Rachel. That's the one that the, that the sons of Jacob hated. Isn't that interesting? The husband of Mary. Now, we will learn that they're not husband and wife. They are engaged. And yet, then, the engagement was just like being married. Today, you'll see a couple that get engaged. Well, you know, you still can go have somebody, you know, you can, we haven't been married yet. We haven't put the rings on our, our finger yet. That's not the Bible times. That woman was just as faithful to her man as they were husband and wife. They just didn't have sexual relations. Jacob had that relation with Rachel for seven years. Well, he ended up with Leah. But he didn't plan on having relations with Rachel until that night. He got the family together. They had the, the wedding reception, and he went into his tent, and he got Leah. A week later, he got Rachel. He was allowed to have sexual relations for her, but you know, he had to work seven more years. Jacob beget Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom, who does he of whom point to? Not Joseph, Mary. Because it does not say, now look, he who beget Elijah, Elijah beget Menthon, Menthon beget Jacob, Jacob beget Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary of whom was born Jesus. Joseph is not the father of Jesus, 
Joseph did not beget Jesus. Look how Matthew points that out. Jesus did not have a human father. And you'll learn about that in Luke when we look at the humanity of Jesus. We will look at, if we, Lord willing, if we get there, we will look at Jesus in the womb of Mary. It. Who is called Christ. You know, there's plenty of Jesus. There's a lot of Jesus is running around in Mexico and coming over to America illegally. So, all the generations of Abraham, the Jew, to David, he's the king, were 14 generations. From David to the carrying away of Babylon, 14 generations. Now, had not the Holy Spirit told Matthew, eliminate those four kings, you wouldn't have got 14. So when you go about dating the Bible, and the rapture's got to happen at this date and time. You got to realize sometimes God says, overlook that. Like he does the church age. The church age is an overlook. The Jewish calendar has stopped for the church age. You say, how do you know? The calendar today is a Romish, Popish calendar. I guarantee God don't use that, though the church uses Easter and Christmas and your popish calendar is dated by Easter. So Easter will work out the, the primary date of Easter. And your Christians use that calendar like it's holy. It's holy baloney, switch cheese. When the church is gone, sometime during Jacob's trouble, the Jewish calendar is going to start again. And when we get to the millennium, the Christian's going to be like, where's March? Where's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Where's, where's December? Where's Christmas? We're done with that. It's the first day, the second day, the third day. It's, uh, uh, I can't think of that, Abed. It's the Passover. It's the Feast of Tabernacles. What about trunk or tree? We don't do that. We're not under the Pope. They're in hell. <laughs> We're not going to have fun. No. Oh, we'll have fun. We'll have great time. We'll have a wonderful time with King Jesus. This is not your kind of fun. From David, from the carrying way to the Babylon, that's like Jeremiah, 14 January. Did you know that? Did you know the exact date of Babylon coming in captivity is uh, Judah was 14 generations from David. Did you know that? You got to read your Bible, all your Bible, to get information. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ right now, verse 18, which we're not going we'll to do. Lord willing, tomorrow, 14 generations. You needed Matthew to learn that. How well would Matthew be telling you 14 generations? Who was Matthew? He was a tax collector. He had to be good with figures. When Jesus is born, there's a taxation and there's a census call to get the, the, the family to Bethlehem where Jesus is to be born by prophecy. Notice it was taxation and a census. Matthew would know that. 